This young man right here. In the striped shirt. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Uh, it's an absolute honor to hear you, and I must say this, that one day I hope I'd be half as good as a narrator as you are today. Well, you're very kind. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, my question relates to your Afghanistan policy. Uh, in light of uh, your statements that the troop withdrawal would start from 2011, uh, there have been recent developments which indicate that USA has been in talks with Taliban, so has to strike out a stable government in uh, Afghanistan as when they withdraw. Now, does this point to the acceptance of the inevitability of the U.S. to fulfill the vision which they had with which they invaded Afghanistan in 2001? Does it point out to their inabil inability to take a military control of all the tumultuous southern regions so that they can install a stable governance? You have noticed that in Iraq where there's a lot of instability now. So does it point to a sort of tacit acceptance of U.S. inability to create harmony in Afghanistan? Uh. First of all, I want to just unpack some of the uh, assumptions inside the question because they're, they're, they're broadly based in fact, but I want to be very precise here. I have said that starting in the summer of next year, July 2011, we will begin drawing down our troop levels, but we will not be removing all our troops. Keep in mind that we ramped up significantly because the idea was that for seven years we had just been in a holding pattern. We had had just enough troops to uh, keep Kabul intact, but the rest of the countryside was deteriorating in fairly significant ways. There wasn't a real strategy, and my attitude was I don't want to seven years from now or eight years from now be in the exact same situation that's not a sustainable equilibrium so I said let's put more troops in to see if we can create more space and stability and time for Afghan security forces to develop and uh, then let's begin drawing down our troops as we're able to stand up Afghan security forces now, in fact, it turns out that in Iraq, you mentioned Iraq as a parallel. In Iraq, we have been relatively successful at doing that. The government's taking way too long to get formed, and that is a source of frustration to us and I'm sure to the Iraqi people. Having said that, though, if you think about it, it's been seven months since the election, and violence levels are actually lower in Iraq than they've been just about any time since the war started at a time when we pulled back our forces significantly. So it shows that it is possible to tr train effective indigenous security forces so that um, they can provide their own security and hopefully po politics then resolves differences as opposed to violence. Now, Afghan, I think, is actually more complicated, more difficult, partly because it's a much poorer country. Uh, it does not have as strong a tradition of a central government. Uh, civil service is very underdeveloped. And so uh, I think that the pace at which we're drawing down is going to be determined in part by military issues, but it's also going to be determined by politics. And that is, is it possible for uh, the, a, a sizable portion of the Pashtun population in Afghanistan uh, that may be teetering back and forth between Taliban or central government? Is it possible for them to feel that uh, their uh, ethnicity, their culture, uh, their uh, numerical uh, position in the country is adequately represented? And uh, can they do that within a context of a broader constitutional Afghan government? And I think that's a worthy conversation to have. So what we've said to President Karzai, because he, this is being initiated by him, what we've said is if uh, former Taliban members or current Taliban members say that they are willing to disassociate themselves with al-Qaeda, uh, 